Hi there, I'm Matt McGemory. I'm part of the agronomic team here in the central and west central part of the state of Illinois. And today we're in a PKP plot in my territory. And believe it or not, this was put in early enough that despite the late planting that plagued much of my area, we have a field that's silking and pollinating. And so this is a great backdrop for us to talk about that reproductive process that you'll all be going into here in the next few weeks. So let's just get started by pointing out the obvious. Those silks on the plants behind me, those are the female portion of the plant. Remember, the plant separates the male and female part of the plant by distance. You have the ears, which are the female portion. You have the tassels, which contain the male genetic material. And the purpose of the silks, that little extension that stretches out from the ovule that will eventually form a kernel, those little silks, their purpose is to catch that male genetic material that is dropping. They do that by having unique little structures on them. Number one, they're kind of sticky. They kind of cause stuff to adhere to them anyway. But number two, they have these little Velcro-like barbs scattered all up and down the length of that silk that lets them grab a hold of that pollen grain that much more easily. When we have that pollen grain germinate, it sends out a little germ tube that grows down into the silk itself grows down the length of the silk over the course of about 24 to 48 hours, spills out that male genetic material into the ovule, fertilizes, forms a kernel itself. That's the process that gets us to this essential step of kernel formation. And as we've said before, that means this is an incredibly delicate period of time that we have to manage very, very well. Now we've talked a little bit about the female portion of the plant, but I wanna focus this time around, this year around, on the male portion of the plant just a little bit. This plant produces, as you know, these unique structures that we call tassels. And you may notice there are these little, not quite cylinders, but they almost remind you of the glooms on a wheat plant, those little coverings that cover the florette. And that's really what these do on this plan as well. You can tell that this is really a newly emerged tassel. And you can tell that because there are very few of those glooms that have opened up and released those anthers, those little structures that are going to release the pollen grains held within. You don't see many of those little papery like things hanging around here. You see just a few right on this portion of the plant. This is a newly emerged tassel. And what this tassel is going to do is spill out a bunch of, of pollen. It's gonna open up these glooms on the central part of the spike first. And so eventually you will see something that looks just a little bit more like this. This is a much more progressed tassel. Still not deep, deep into it. We're not talking about it getting to the end of that few to several day period in which it shed all of its pollen, but you'll notice a good portion of the central part of that central spike has opened those glooms. Those little anthers that you can see right there have opened up. They're hanging out. They're going to open little pores out and spill out pollen grains. And we're talking about this individual thing, this individual structure producing millions of pollen grains. That equates to a few to several thousand pollen grains per silk. So it gives you an idea about the volume of material that we're talking about. It's going to progress from this, it's going to stretch up, down, and out, and eventually you're going to wind up with a tassel that looks like this. With all those little glooms open, with all those little anthers, those little chad-like things, hanging chad-like things, uh, spilled out there. You're going to see those all open all over the tassel. This is going to happen over the course of several days. When is it going to tend to spill out that pollen? Usually that mid-morning period when humidity is just right. Why does humidity have to be just right? It's because those little pollen grains are actually not very good at holding up against desiccation. Within a matter of several minutes, maybe a little bit more than that, but in the matter of several minutes, they will desiccate they will dry out, they will become unviable. And so we have only a short period of time for those pollen grains to drop from the structure, get to the silk, establish that kernel. And we need as many things in the corner of that pollen grain as possible to get that happening. So I said several days at least, some people would say that with variability in the field, you may see uh, pollen shed over the course of a two week period throughout that field. 
but don't think that means that you have a long period of time to kind of sit back and wait for this to go right. If these silks get clipped off, it can only take a matter of days for pollination to be screwed up for that individual plant. You may see pollen should happen great throughout the rest of the field, but if we miss it here in a very narrow period of time, a few days, that this thing is actually receptive to things happening there with kernel development, we miss that, then we are gonna probably suffer some severe yield loss in the field. And it's a reminder, even though it's hot and miserable and humid and very uncomfortable to get into the field right now, we wanna get out and make sure this process goes through without a hitch. We can't really do much about pollen shed. That's driven by progression of the plant, water pressure in the plant, kind of heat, humidity, those kind of things. We really can't do a lot to speed up silk development. That's driven by humidity. But we, what we can do is make sure certain pests aren't clipping off those silks and impeding our ability to establish kernels. We have a limited period of time to get this process right. Thanks a lot. We'll talk with you soon. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.